Hey everybody, Chef Rich here. I'm gonna show you how to cook corned beef and cabbage the way my mom showed me. And uh, this goes way back to the Irish immigrants in New York City back in the day. Here we have uh, a gratuitous seasoning packet. Got some pickling spices in here. We don't need those. If you throw those in the water, you're going to be picking them out of your teeth. This thing already has enough flavor in it. I'm not even going to rinse it. Some people rinse them. I'm just going to drop it right in the water. And uh, let it simmer. I'm going to kick the heat down. Look at this bloody mess. I got to wash my hands. Don't do this at home. We just want a slight simmer. So we're going to cover it up. Making a bloody mess here. Let me wash my hands. Clean up a little. All right. And I'm going to show you a trick for a easy cleanup. You're peeling uh, carrots or peeling any vegetables for that matter. Take some uh, plastic wrap, put it down on your cutting board, and peel. Any way you can uh, make cleanup quicker and easier during the operation, it helps. One, two, and three. Quick tidy up. Clip the ends off here, clean the carrots up. Chop them into bite sized pieces. Don't have to be perfect. That's about three pounds of carrots. Now, we want to kick that down a little. That's a roll. We could do that by adding this. Yes, a little Irish Guinness extra stout. The Irish in the Irish American dish. This is going to impart some excellent flavor into the beef. If, uh, if you don't want to use beer for whatever reason, uh, gluten issues or alcohol issues, whatever, uh, there are alternatives. Like, uh, for instance, Apple cider vinegar. Put about a cup of this in and you're good to go. That's a good flavor. All right, we're gonna rinse these. Anything that comes out of the ground, I like to rinse. You <laughs> should be careful to try and not hit your camera operator with the water spray. What a trooper. What a professional. Didn't even flinch. Alright, let's speed this up a little bit. Chop this cabbage. This cabbage is huge. I'm going to chop it into wedges. I'm not even going to use all these wedges because I'm cooking for about four or five people right now with that size piece of meat, which was about four pounds. There's going to be a lot of shrinkage in the meat. There's brine in there and fat. It's going to dissolve away. Watch your fingers while you're cutting. Just get those cores out of there. Cut some nice little wedges here. The ones that I don't cook in the broth today, I make cook later in the broth down the line. After we're, when we're eating some leftovers or uh, possibly even make some coleslaw. All right, rinse the potatoes. Right now, the uh, 
the meat's been cooking for about two hours and 15 minutes. So we're going to put the potatoes in, cover it up, and let it go for another 15 minutes. Pop it open. Add the carrots. Mmm, look at that. You could smell that. It smells incredible. 15 more minutes for the carrots. Now we're going to drain some of the uh, liquid here. Make a little room for the, for the cabbage. Take out a couple cups. Just to make a little room. Shame I dumped that down the drain, but we have plenty of it. Alright, in goes the cabbage wedges. Each wedge will serve one person. Unless you really like cabbage, then you might want to make a little more room here. Okay. Oh, it smells so good. Cover it up. Give it another 15 minutes. And here we go. Total cooking time, about three hours for a four pound piece of meat. Just using this bowl to clear the cabbage out. Scoop some veggies. It's just helping me plate it up here. I'm gonna grab the meat. Some tongs. Oh yeah. Look at that. Let it drip off here. There's no need to really let it rest. Grab some veggies and potatoes. This is a, this is actually a peasant's meal, was a peasant's meal. The uh, early immigrants, they were used to eating pork in Ireland. And then when they got to New York City, pork was uh, prohibitively expensive. So they consulted with their Jewish neighbors and uh, got corned beef. Which they weren't uh, weren't able to eat in Ireland because it was too expensive, and they ex import exported it all. So the Irish people in Ireland never really ate corned beef. They ate lots of cabbage and potatoes. All right, we're going to cut first with the grain. Cut it in half. Now we're going to cut it against the grain, and these pieces will melt in your mouth. You always want to cut it beef against the grain. It makes it a whole lot easier to chew. You can see the fat melted away. There was fat marbled in the meat, and that all melted away and added flavor. Ah, oh, yeah. Easy to cook meal, one pot. Uh, this is going to be great with the horseradish cream sauce I'm going to make. I'm curious, uh, why don't you leave me a comment, tell me what you would use as a sauce. Some people prefer mustard. I like the horseradish cream sauce. I'm curious, what do you like? Leave a comment, please. I hope, uh, I hope this video helped you.
I'm happy to share this recipe. It's really easy. All you need is a stock pot, a couple of utensils here and there. Ah, oh, this is going to be good. Grab a piece of Irish soda bread, slab it with some butter. Grab a Guinness and have a great St. Patrick's Day, folks.